Good evening, the viewers. I'm sure another rejob is over and done with. And would you believe the director which asked me to give my views about it? Cause that's not been done before. No, I really, I really should make fun of him because it is awfully cruel, but it is so fun to do. I really, I really shouldn't be doing this anyway because <laughs> I remember that earful I got from doing the last one where he offered me a handsome shot, but I could hardly refuse. I mean, you try refusing not doing a speech when you've got a great load of porridge being loaded to your front jaw, and you're just saying, well, eat me, that's what it's saying, it's just, it's just got a big sign, it says, eat me, big trolley porridge, it's just, ah, oh, you know, it's, I even had a wagon full of pancakes, you know, um, it's, man, but that just, that, that just was just too much, just too much. And as for me, and as for doing this, the other part, and of course, it's more screen time, and at the moment, I could really do with some more publicity, positive publicity. Because uh, look at me. I mean, I know that I'm brilliant and always will be brilliant, but I'm surrounded by all this incompetence and all this, all this acting, this, uh, all that horrible, horrible. Look at that. And that. And that. I could almost see the strings moving. It's just. Some people just don't know how to be professional, quite frankly. Some. Uh, well, look, look at that. Bloody well created. You know. Obviously, you know. It's just. I, I shouldn't even have to you know, apologize. I mean, I'll probably just break it down or make it pick up trucks or. Or something like that. And I'll probably change it in the end anyway, so. And get a completely new crane that does things. It's just fantastic what I can do with money. And, uh, and lots of porridge. But, uh, besides all that, it's, it's, it's been good. Uh, at least we didn't see that bloody Percival anywhere within this production. You know, he... If whenever he comes along, it, it just makes it the worst read job of all time. Uh, oh, just, just excuse me a second. <laughs> this is totally unprofessional. Though. Hello, what you want? This better be about Peach, eh? Ah, um, hello there. I, uh, <clears throat> I mean, hello there. I am calling to ask about your fridge. Uh, what about it? I recently stocked it up with ham. Are you the ham man? Um... Would you please tell me, my good sir, is it running? I have no idea right now, but I'm sure I'll check it when I get home. No, no. Um, <clears throat> no, no, you fat off. That is not what you're supposed to say. You will please be saying yes, and then I'll reply, well, you better go and catch it. But I don't know if it's running, because it could be broken down for all I know, because it's been on the blink recently. And I certainly hope that it hasn't, because, you know, I've got my ham in there, I've got my sausages, and... And blood pudding and square sausage and and that haggis, ooh haggis, sheep's intestines, that'd be nice. Oh, trust you to think about food at inappropriate times. Okay, Percival, you can drop the act now. I know it's you. Oh, oh bugger! How did you know it was me? Well, aside from your inability to say something original, much like this entire segment, the real jet giveaway is the fact that the person on the other end of the phone sounds remarkably like Shorty Blair. Pretty obvious, really. Oh, do be quiet. I think Mr. Blair is lovable and cuddly and should never have resigned. That Gordon Brown fellow just can't hold a torch to him, in my honest opinion. No, oh, whatever. You don't have to pick your moments to make your calls, do you? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I uh, don't quite follow you there. What on earth do you mean? Oh, don't give me the job performance. It's obvious that it was you who's been calling me the last few years. I'll tell you what, you sure do pick the worst possible times. I've just repeated myself. Yes, I feel like I'm clever repeating myself over and over again. Yes, this script is an inner shambles. Besides, I was in the bath last time you called. Ah, now, uh, please don't mention that. That is one image I think myself and the viewers uh, shouldn't be thinking about at this present moment in time. If ever. I thank you. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Forget you only had eyes for your bike, your precious, precious bike. Yes, I know what you do with that. Ah, uh, now I don't think we should bring the bike into this. And if I may ask, please stop going on about that. Um, and you well know, I am happily married. Oh, you mean you're married to your bike? Oh, well, well now, um, as I have said, I don't think it would be wise to discuss that at the present moment. And uh, I really am not able to answer that fully to the best of my abilities. Um, yes, uh, I am thinking it would be for the best to possibly terminate the phone call within the next few moments, possibly sooner. Yes, that's it. Just put the phone down so I can carry on here with this speech. What? Why? Are you making another anti-Percival monologue? Oh, you're only jealous because you're used for introducing outtakes. Uh, well, at least I can get other gigs aside from talking nonsense like your good self into some camera. Anyway, I don't go into a nervous breakdown over some silly red car. Huh. Well, at least I don't feel there to smash one up every time I see one. Uh, really, I've had enough. If I keep arguing with you, my OCD will start playing up again. I leave you to it. Try not to go on for too long. Ha! Good day to you, sir. Well, I showed him, didn't I? I showed him! I showed all of you! <laughs> of course, it was pretty obvious it was him because, you know, can't play pranks to save his life. Um, what was I doing? Oh, that's right. I was laughing, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd better wrap this up. Um, you know, usual read-off was terrible. Uh, I'm sorry that I had to waste so much of my time to be in it, and uh, Percival's an idiot. And now I'm going to eat some square sausage and haggis. Mmm, Scottish cuisine. Mmm.